So, hello and welcome to the PASCOM 17 release keynote. Uh, before we start, there are a few admin things to go through. Uh, on the right-hand side of your screen, you'll see a name box and a question box. Um, so the format for today is we're going to start off with a short presentation of the new product developments and so on, and finish off with a Q&A session. So as we go through, put your questions in there, and they'll arrive here, and at the end we'll go through them all and answer your questions as best we can. And so, to start us off, uh, yeah, thanks very much for joining us. And we are going to go through what's new in PASCOM 17 with starting with some server updates, I believe. Yes, with the less important parts. Yeah, the less important parts, and then we're going to go uh, on Maybe to... they're very important for you. It could be. You never, you know. never know. Yeah, exactly. So, what's, what's the first up? The first is the trunk autoconfig. Uh-huh. What's that? Um, everybody who tried to configure a zip trunk, mm -hmm maybe found out that sometimes it's hard. Yeah, sadly, SIP is not standard everywhere. Yes, it's not standard, and it maybe, yes, it is standard, but, but it, it changes has a lot of options. Yeah, exactly. And some providers want these options, mm -hmm. those options. And uh, we found out that this is a problem very, very soon, so we introduced the trunk template, I think, four years ago. Yeah, about that, yeah. Five years. So yeah. we collect trunk templates, mm -hmm. um, and if we have a new uh, provider, we add him to the trunk templates and then it should be easier. But there are a lot of trunks yes. or trunk providers out mm -hmm. there which we cannot support or we cannot test, we cannot nothing. Okay. So many of our customers and partners uh, had the problem, they connect to the trunk, it is complicated, they had to test about uh, three settings or four, mm -hmm. with four or five options each. So multiple, 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 multiple yeah. possibilities, uh, and it was sometimes hard. So we introduced an uh, auto uh, trunking. What does it mean? Um, we try to find out things automatically okay. and adjust them, or we set things more often. Let's say you have the possibility in the zip header, do, you can set who you are mm -hmm. on four different places, let's say. Right. And we just try where to set it and if it fits. So we, we populate like as many fields as we can yes. with what information we have available and try to find out the best settings. Yes, with some magic auto stuff yeah. <laughs> included. <laughs> Perfect. <laughs> Just works. Cool. Uh, we tried this uh, with our base of um, partners we have. Mm -hmm. So we have a lot of partners which are SIP providers. Yep. We tested them and we had a, a success rate of uh, almost 90%. Just with the new auto feature, you do not know the provider, you just use full auto. Mm -hmm. And it worked in 90%. So that's, I think, a very good okay. uh, rate. Mm -hmm. uh, how does this work? Yeah, that's important. Mm, yes, but <laughs> it's easy. Okay. <laughs> Hopefully it's easy. You go to trunks. You add a trunk. I did this already, so I have to be careful with the name. Uh, you have now generic zip trunk available. Let's say A, B, not important. Name. Yeah. I, I, one minute ago, mm -hmm. one, one second yeah. ago I said it, but thank you. Uh, and now here you can add the accounts. As you know, or as you might know, we can do multiple accounts per one trunk. Mm -hmm. In some situations you need this, you just add it. And then we switch many fields to auto. And that's it. And they do just the right thing, hopefully, in many situations. So your numbers will be displayed correctly. Mm -hmm. um, the inbound numbers will be ripped out of the zip header correctly. Um, if you don't like this, because you exactly know what's going on, you can switch to whatever you like. But it really works well now with uh, this autoconfig feature. And it does all the probes if you apply and do your first calls, then it probes again, and it works really good. Good, so, yeah, that's a, a good step forward in terms of getting a, a trunk com commissioning up and running and so on. And we've also done another server upgrade, which may be interesting uh, for some of you guys uh, in terms of what we've done with the company Baronet. Uh, Matthias, what have we done with supporting their new firmware, other than supporting it? Yes, <laughs> we support it now. <laughs> Fair enough. <laughs> Why? Uh, they changed the API mm -hmm. and we tried always to use the old API because we have a, a long relationship to the company, uh, Bironet. So we stick to the old API now, we use the new API and from 16 onward I think they can only have the new API. Okay. Um, I'm not 100% sure but now we support it 
and now you can have it newer than this. This was not such a big issue for our customers because we are using beer net gateways very basic. We make a call yes. and we receive calls, mm -hmm. and Baronet can do this for a very long time already. Yeah. So yeah. stable, rock solid, mm -hmm. really good uh, product. So it was not a big deal. They just had to uh, downgrade. And then it worked again, but now you Don't can have to do use it. Yes, like it's shipped with mm -hmm. the version it's shipped. Okay. Works out of the box again. Good. Oh, so a little bit less administration there. Yes. Good. Now, on to the thing that we are all here to see. Uh, we have been working very, very hard on upgrading our user experience and mobility and so on and so on. And you can see from the picture uh, on the screen that uh, there's quite a lot of uh, mobile apps going on there on tablets, mobile phones. And you can see that it's consistent across all platforms now. Um, now, Matthias, why is it called Reloaded? It's called Reloaded because it's really reloaded. So we did not, we had an app yep. in, in the past. We did not just change a few icons. Normally, um, you do it like this, that you have your desktop application for your work mm -hmm. in full size with all the features, and then you have some aspects on your mobile. Yes. A few which you need maybe when you're on the road. Mm -hmm. We said it's time to have a really great application, like our desktop client, mm -hmm. available on all platforms. Right. Then you could just do it like this, that you say, okay, my client is a web formula and I can also open a web formula on my mobile. Yeah. But that's not the way we like it, because you need a deep integration into mm -hmm. every operating system, yeah. like we did on the desktop. Yeah. You need um, really to integrate into the desktop seamlessly, that mm -hmm. it's a good user experience. Of course, yeah. And mm -hmm. what we did is we have the same base, the same code base, which is in C++ uh, for every Actually, platform. Yep. And we just have a layer above okay. for the UI. So it feels and has the speed of a natural mobile, mobile app or mm -hmm. desktop app or whatever. Mm -hmm. um, but you have all the features on all platforms. So for sure, we have another skin mm -hmm. or we have another um, template, how is it called? Can, theme. Yeah, with theme. Theme, yeah. sorry. Mm -hmm. Theme it's called. Yeah. We have another theme for a mobile application mm -hmm. because uh, maybe you don't want those tiny little buttons. You can have them on the desktop uh, because you are using the mouse. Yeah. Here you use your, maybe you have as big fingers as, mm, yeah. uh, mm -hmm. maybe. Uh, then it's hard. So for sure there's another theme and it reacts different if it's on a mobile phone. So we have, sure. the, we have the, the user experience, the behavior that we expect from a mobile application yes. with the feature set of yes. our desktop application. But the core is the same. Yeah. And what does this mean for our users? If you invent a new feature on the desktop, it's automatically on the mobile phone. So it's not just a light white, you can use it somehow app. Mm -hmm. It's the full functionality we have on your mobile. Sometimes we turn off functionality <laughs> like we have a fax server, so yep. you can send faxes from your desktop application. We did disable this button here because we had to make um, some things that you can load the file and yeah. choose it, mm -hmm. and it made no sense, so we did do it. Yeah. Uh, please let us know if you think it makes sense. Please yeah. let us if you know. have a use case for faxing from your mobile, let us know in our uh, 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 Pascom forum, and um, yeah, we'll consider it if it's a, a valid one. Yes, yeah. <laughs> and um, the basic idea is, as I said, have everything on every platform and every feature on every platform. Mm -hmm. The hard thing about this is if you invent a new feature, we have to think about it, is it useful on the mobile? How can we display that it works also on the, mo on the mobile? But because of our, even our desktop application is full responsive. We mm -hmm. always have to care about this. This is a lot of work. So thinking about a new feature, you have to have the whole stack in mind. Yeah. This is more complicated for us but hopefully it's more convenient for our customers. Yeah. And I think relatively unique on the market. Yeah. Good, so uh, what we're gonna start off with when we're going through the mobile app, obviously the first thing we need to consider is how we can actually yeah, connect the app to our phone system. Uh, we need to make sure that everything's nice, uh, secure. We also need to make it user friendly for both the yes. end, yeah, user friendly for both the users and the admin. And the admin. Yeah. And, um, we introduced such a long queue, and you have to type it on this little keyboard. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, exactly. That's our answer. Yeah. Yeah. No, our answer is to use uh, QR codes. Mm -hmm. um, you have two possibilities. You can use this as an administrator on the web UI. Yeah. So as usual, you create the new phone. Um, you edit the phone in the Pascom commander. Um, you say pair, and then you get the barcode. I can show this uh, quickly. Um, you go to devices, device list. 
And then you have here somewhere some phone. Let's say, I don't know who's not paired yet. I think he's not paired. You say edit, you can say pair. It generates a uh, barcode for you. Mm -hmm. Then you go to the phone and you scan it. This is the possibility A. Yes. But we want our administrators to have no work, or at least, or that they can focus on what they really have to do, yes. making new coffee. Mm -hmm. or well, it's not just that. It has to tie in with all the strategies that a company may have yeah. for mobility. So sure. bring your own device, choose your own device. Sure. Yeah. And sure. Yeah, we so. love our administrators and we do a lot for them. Yeah, exactly. So <laughs> what we do, or what we did, is we integrated this in our desktop client. So if you allow the user to pair his own device, you can go to the settings and you see two different devices. Mm -hmm. This one, as an administrator, I allowed the user to, let's say, self-maintain. Yes. This is restricted, you cannot change anything. Mm -hmm. But if you're allowed to self-maintain, you can pair. You have to retype your password like this. Then you get instructions, download the app. Here is Google, here is uh, Apple. Then I can go to the phone. I start uh, the application, I get the barcode scanner. I scan the code and then it does the rest for you. And as you can see here, Quick, the peering is done. Simple. It's done and it's done. Yeah. That was it. That's cool, mm -hmm. I think. So why do we do it like this? You could say you just have to enter username and password. Everybody can do this. Yes, but it's not true. You have to enter username, you mm -hmm. have to enter password, you have to enter the server, you have to enter which SIP phone you want to pair, mm -hmm. you have to enter the credentials of the SIP phone. Yes. So if you would do it by hand, you would have user 100 or user Matthias, maybe, mm -hmm. password 1234, peer 100, password ABC. Yeah. And this would make, uh, we, we, we have so, m we're doing so many things to make the product secure. Mm -hmm. Only encryption everywhere. Yes. And then this would be a real mess. Because uh, end users are typically very lax when it comes to security, yeah, so they would choose it's not insecure comfortable. passwords. It's not comfortable Definitely. for them. I understand it. I mm -hmm. would do the same. Yeah. So we take it away. Yeah. Yes. And make it simple, quick and easy, yes. and secure. And so we can have, as we did for our desktop phones, we can have the long peer names, the long mm -hmm. uh, passwords, really um, strong passwords. We can have a unique token which only is valid once mm -hmm. while I'm pairing. Yep. And that's cool, I think. That's another aspect of the QR code, for example. It's only valid yes. for five minutes. Yes, uh, it's valid for five minutes and then mm -hmm. it's over. Yeah. So have to regenerate it. Mm -hmm. You can do this. Maybe I can show it. You can do this. Um, no, I can't show it because I had to unpair again. Yep. But in this um, mask, you can see the barcode down. You can see a counter. Yes. It counts down and you can regenerate on the fly if you click there or it automatically regenerates after five minutes. Mm -hmm. Yeah, and it's all explained in our documentation with uh, graphic imagery. Oh, fully. It is, it is. It is? Yeah, it went on my, uh, live this morning. Ah. So uh, with the images in there and everything, so you can see it all live uh, on our documentation and uh, try it out. Now, obviously, with a mobile device, uh, we need to pe make some considerations for the fact that it's going to be, you know, effectively always on. Um, so we need to make sure that our battery usage is very efficient. Uh, Matthias, what have we done on that front to make it so? No, we don't use any battery at all. Okay, fair <laughs> enough. That's always good. Yeah, go to the next slide. <laughs> yeah, fair enough. No. no. Um, what we did is we have a real background mode. So if you switch your mobile or if you go out of the app, you mm -hmm. close it, no, you're not close it, you just press the home button or uh, whatever. Um, like this, I just press it, it goes to the background. What do I do then? It goes really out of the CPU. Mm -hmm. It's just in the memory, so it stays in the memory, um, but it's completely turned off. Right. This sounds easy, yeah, you, put, uh, you press this button, it's off. Mm -hmm. But uh, consider we have SIP connections, we have XMPP connections yeah. and whatnot, so it's really complicated. Now it's sleeping, mm -hmm. and what to do? You deregister as a peer, what to do. So we had to invent a new layer mm -hmm. that we can handle all of that, that yeah. we know, okay, he is still available on his SIP phone, but it's in background, and we have to reconnect mm -hmm. somehow and somewhat, and it's relatively complicated, mm -hmm. but we made it. Yeah. So what does this mean? It consumes battery only if you're looking at it, right. if it's open and you're looking at it. Mm -hmm. All the other situations, no. Then you could say being in the memory somehow consumes yes. some battery. Some but a minimal, minimal amount. Yes. Yeah. 
Yes, it really is good. Yeah. Cool. Um, so that means what we obviously then had to think about was how we're going to you know, push, as the screen says, calls, messages and so on onto the mobile device so that the users can um, yeah, carry on communicating as they uh, would normally do even if they're out of the office. Uh, and so what we did is we built our own push server. Yes. To a certain degree. Yes. So normally, or if you use, or if you used our competitor solutions, mm -hmm. um, it's like this that you have, if you want push services, you have to uh, create an account at uh, Apple mm -hmm. and at Google if you want to support both devices. You have to handle with SSL certificates, you have to handle with uh, handshakes, you have to deal with your firewall, you have to, I don't know, you have to do a lot that pushing works. What does pushing mean? Pushing means your device is turned off in your pocket and then you get a push message which comes to your phone and says, hey, there is a ring, uh, hey, there is a, a call for you. Hey, there is an SMS for you or not an SMS, a message, a chat message for you. Uh, this is what, what push does. So it's cool, um, but it has to be fast and it has to be reliable. And if yes. you do it on your own, it's relatively complicated. And also for Apple, there is something called like a priority push mm -hmm. and you cannot do it on your own very easy. Um, priority push means it's a prioritized push message of a VoIP application okay. and it's faster. Right. Uh, because if you get a chat message, okay, it's 10 seconds too late, it's 10 seconds too late. It's not the end of the world. Yes, for the most of the people. Yeah. But the phone call maybe is over then. Yes. That's so uh, we do all this of this for you and we have our own push service. And the good thing is every appliance which uses valid maintenance is allowed to use our push services. So in fact, you have to do nothing. You have to pay money for yeah, the, you have to have an active software maintenance. Yes. Um, so you have to be an existing customer with active software maintenance, and then you but have full access to everything. Everybody who uses have. this in production should be. Yes. So otherwise, they wouldn't get the updates anyway. Yes, that's also true. Yeah. You are right. Yeah. Maybe you're from the sales team. <laughs> <laughs> it's possible. You never know. Yeah. Um, so we integrated this completely for you, and you don't have to do anything. The only thing which has to be configured on your side is that you can access my.poscom.net, which is also the update server for the appliance, so you should, it should be, already be configured yes, anyway. Uh, HTTPS connection, and it's just outgoing, so no yeah. incoming traffic. We did it all with outgoing traffic. So if your um, company is allowed to surf internet, so mm -hmm. use uh, HTTPS, then it already works. So it should be really, really easy for you. Okay, um, then the next part of what we integrated is obviously when you're talking about workplace mobility and mobile apps and so on and instant messaging, uh, in the past when we sent a, a chat message it came onto our desktop application and you know you pretty much were sure that it's arrived because you could see the user was online. Now on a mobile application it's a bit different because it could be in their pocket, they could be on the train or wherever they are. It uh, could be disabled it, or the battery because you use another application is empty. Yes, it could well be. Yeah. yeah. Mm -hmm. uh, so uh, we need to then let our users know whether a message has been delivered, read and so on mm -hmm. and so on. Uh, and of course that means that those really desired green ticks from other applications that we all well know have been integrated into our applications, regardless of whether it's desktop or on the mobile, um, so that we can, of course, see what yes. is going on. So on the desktop, it's really quick. So if I send a test me message, you could see one tick, two, because it sent it already. And if change, uh, James reads the message, somewhere, somehow, mm -hmm. maybe he does it now. And then you see now it's red. Um, it works like you expect. Uh, plus, you can see that he stopped typing already. Yeah. Yeah. Um, so we have maybe some extra information also. Mm -hmm. But we introduced uh, those ticks because now, if you have the mobile application, it makes sense. There could of be course. a situation where somebody cannot receive it mm -hmm. or cannot read it or whatever. Yeah. Oh, it's really handy, but nothing special. I think you expect that. No, that's true. Good. Uh, and now on to the main 
feature of Pascom 17. Uh, in, we had our old mobile apps that could do, for example, chat messaging and, and so on and so on. Um, but the thing that they sort of really lacked was an integrated mobile soft phone. Yes. Um, so what we've done with Pascom 17 is we've taken our mobility solutions to the next level and actually put a soft phone in there. Yes. Um, and what we're going to do now is have a quick look and see what it looks yeah. like. It looks like a phone. Yes. You can see it here. Mm -hmm. um, you can call something uh, like your mobile box. Um, you have all the buttons available. You can add uh, calls. You can transfer it. You can even transfer it to one of your colleagues just by clicking. Mm -hmm. As I told you, the same functionality as the desktop client. Yeah. So it's really, really cool because it's not only a software where you can say hello, 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 mm -hmm. and then hang up. Um, mm -hmm. You can do almost everything you can do with the desktop client. Yeah, so if you work in a team, for example, and you've got a call coming in, you need to transfer onto a colleague, that could all be done directly from your mobile device now, uh, making it much more useful as a communications mm -hmm. uh, hub for when you're on the go. Yes. Good. Um, one next thing is that we integrated also the maybe well-known iOS call kit. What it means is maybe you just give me a call on uh, the iPhone. This is oh, from your desktop. Mm -hmm. Which one are you? Uh, no, I'm the one with the, the, the Diane. I'm yeah, that's Diane. the one. That's the one. Mm -hmm. That's Diane. What you can see now, you get a push message with uh, this call. And what you can see, it looks like it's from Apple. How does this work? Uh, you can accept it now. And now it goes to our application. So we use the call kit. Um, you can hang up. What the call kit does is a lot. It integrates it into the, uh, in, the, in, the, uh, in the iOS completely. Mm -hmm. So now this call is also in my journal, mm -hmm. not only in the journal of the Passcom, but, but also, also on the mobile device. On the mobile device. Mm -hmm. uh, if you are on the phone and somebody else calls you, it's busy, yeah. or stuff like this. If you have locked the phone, you don't have to unlock it. You get this message, mes message screen mm -hmm. with the push notifications and everything in there. Mm -hmm. So it really works cool. Even if the application is shut down or in the background, you get the push, you get the information, you get the chat message, you get the calls. Yeah. Um, we did this also for Android, mm -hmm. but on our own. In Android, there is also something like the call kit, but it's only for six upwards, so Android and, 6 and... And we want to support from 5 onwards. Yes, so we did it on our own completely, that we can support it, um, but in future we will also have the integration, mm -hmm. but we made it because we needed it anyway for 5. Yeah. So we did all of this, so it gets better even on Android um, in the future, but it's also our own integration. Android is also really cool. Mm -hmm. The same functionality, if it's in the background, if you have locked, we unlock the screen, we yeah. do everything. So just try it out. Yeah. But Apple users love this call kit. Yes. As they told us. Mm -hmm. I don't know, but they told us. When talking to customers of ours about the uh, upcoming mobile apps, one of the key things was, is the uh, iOS cool kit going to be integrated? We said what? <laughs> we were that. Um, so yeah, it's there and uh, everyone can use it. Good. Now, uh, obviously with a mobile device, one of the main functions is that it can make GSM calls and so on. Um, now, when you are on the road, uh, it could be that you're on a train um, and you're in the middle of the countryside, you have limited uh, data uh, connectivity or so on and so on, or you know that where you are you have an unstable VLAN, a Wi-Fi connection or whatever it may be. If you use the Deutsche Bahn, then you're used to this. Or British Rail. Br British Rail, I don't know, but... Yeah, British Rail's yeah, the same. Yeah. They copied it from Germany. Uh, no, I think you copied it from us. Ah, <laughs> okay. <laughs> Yeah, anyway, so that means we obviously have to include uh, the GSM functionality of a mobile phone. Um, Matthias, when we are talking about that, we've not just got the fallback, we can also switch it manually, can't we? Yes. What we had in the past, uh, in our product, always, not always, but for a very long time, is uh, the mobile hub. Yeah. We had this already, so you could have our old app, um, you could dial a number, and then you dialed with your GSM into the Pascom, mm -hmm. out of the Pascom to the customer or to your colleague. Still using the one number yes, concept. one number something. concept. And it looked like for everybody that you are using... Your office phone. The office phone. So mm -hmm. it worked pretty good. Yeah. Uh, we used it a lot. Um, and it's relatively useful in uh, those situations when you don't have a good uh, data connection. Yeah. And if you're on the, in, in, in a train or even with the car, mm -hmm. you switch the mobile quality very often. Um, you, cannot, you can adapt with the codecs then, mm -hmm. sure, that's yeah. possible. But GSM is almost everywhere working. Yeah. So we introduced the switch. Um, you go to the uh, app, mm -hmm. you switch 
to GSM. If you have configured the mobile hub, yep. then that's available. Okay. And then you just go out through GSM and receive calls through GSM. Mm -hmm. But we have also a call, a fallback functionality in there. So we try to wake up your phone, as you, as you did see, we mm -hmm. try to wake up your phone somehow yeah. uh, with the push, push magic and the prioritized push packets. Um, if this does not work because data is lacking or mm -hmm. it's too slow or the push service, because it always goes through Apple, through Google, mm -hmm. um, has too many service, uh, too many pushes in the queue. I don't know. Whatever Something yeah. happens. We still need to make sure that call yes. gets delivered to we the wait, person. Mm -hmm. um, up to 20 seconds. And if this does not work, we make the GSM call. Okay. You can also reduce this. You can configure this. Our default is now 20 seconds. So mm -hmm. if we cannot reach the phone within 20 seconds and it registers via zip on our server, we do the fallback automatically. Mm -hmm. You can go to our settings. You can reduce that time. Yeah. But maybe sometimes it takes five seconds and the mobile network takes also five seconds. So we have to play with these values. Yeah. For now, it's yeah. 20. But it's just for inbound calls. Okay. Fair enough. Good. Um, now, uh, obviously, with having lots of mobile devices and so on and so on, we also need to be able to control how our devices ring, uh, in yeah. what order, if there's a delay of any kind and so on. Uh, you know, in the day of uh, where we are now with modern uh, mobile working and business agility and so on, lots of people have lots of devices. So we need to be able to manage them effectively. And this is where our follow me, Find Me, Follow Me system comes into play. Um, so, Matthias, let's have a look at it. First, explain it a little bit and then ah, okay, have a look you at can it. do that then. Um, I, I try to. Yeah. We had a follow me system. No. Since the beginning, <laughs> we have a follow me system which can be configured by the administrator. That's true, yeah. And it's complex. You can have hot desking. We have mm -hmm. all those features for a very long period. Yeah. Um, you can do this as an administrator. And then we started to empower the user to do this. Mm -hmm. And then we thought, OK, you can have many hot desking devices. You can have this and that. You can have an overall timer. You can have a queue timer, the end timer, the this timer, the that. Mm -hmm. And then we tried to give this power to the user. We had such a matrix, yeah. like this, S such a matrix. Mm -hmm. You could configure something, and then everybody said, OK, what's doing? what yeah. it's doing now? The Will my phone ever ring? The holistic graphical representation wasn't exactly the most easy to understand. Yes, it was correct. I it was correct. correct. It was great, but it was far too complicated. Yeah. Then we asked a lot of the users, what do you expect? What is your daily situation? How does it work? Uh, what do you want to switch? And we try to simplify it a lot. Mm -hmm. And uh, now I can show, uh, show you what we came up with. Um, we have only those few things you can do, mm -hmm. and we think it's enough. Yeah. I can say I don't want to get calls on my mobile if there is an external call, if there is a call from the team. You can switch that back, and you can have a delay. Let's say five seconds. Um, this does mean if I get an internal call, it first tries to reach this phone. Mm -hmm. If this phone is unreachable, um, or if it's even ringing, then we delay this for five seconds because I'm not on my desk. Yeah. And then I can do it like this. Or I can say, if go, I, I leave it like this. And if I go to the road, I do this. Yeah. Something like this. Instead mm -hmm. of setting a redirection, you just enable and disable your mobile. Yes. Uh, for those uh, mm -hmm. things, for yeah. those uh, three different mm -hmm. scenarios. And we think having the delay and having those three options for internal, external, and team calls is what most people want. Yeah, I mean, it's definitely, with, when we introduced the, follow me, the user configurable follow me uh, system the first time around, uh, the fact that you could control those uh, three types of communication channels uh, was uh, rather essential for our customers. Uh, I mean, a lot of people who said, OK, I don't want to be control, uh, called via SIP from a team call, for example, they would turn that off because of, they were concerned about audio quality or whatever it may be with uh, reduced network availability. Yeah. Um, but obviously, now with the GSM fallback, you don't have to worry about that anymore. Keep it back on, and you get uh, reachable on your mobile device all the time. Yes, and yeah. you can, the user can play around yeah. and see what fits best for him. Mm -hmm. I always like to have a follow-me system which I don't have to change. Yes. So I really like this uh, delay of uh, five seconds, mm -hmm. because um, I see that it's ringing on my desk or on my hardware phone if I'm on the desk, and then I have five seconds or maybe I switch it to 10, 10 seconds to answer the call. And if I'm on the way, 
um, after 10 seconds, my mobile will ring. Yeah. So that's mm -hmm. okay, and I never have to change it yeah. without being uh, bothered by the system. Good. Now, if we just quickly go to the iPad here, um, what we can see here is that on the screen, uh, when it comes to the Follow Me system, uh, this is unfortunately in German, but uh, uh, never mind, we can... Uh, they cannot read it anyhow because it's yeah. too small, so it's not Fair important. enough, but there is a nice little box around it telling you which device you're actually using uh, at that present moment that's of time. That's true. So yeah, that's what I wanted to show, but um, you'll have to download it yourself and see it for yourself. Yes, <laughs> oh, but it's, it's, it's handy, yeah. so you know which, your, the, which device you are holding in your hands. Mm -hmm. uh, we did not have this in the past and we unpaired because we tested a lot of devices, yeah. unpaired very often the wrong uh, system. Yeah. So. yeah, so it led to a few uh, confusions there. Now it's nice and clear which device you're actually using. Good. So moving on to the next aspect of what we have integrated. Obviously, with mobile devices, we need to update our presence management a little bit um, because we need to know whether somebody is uh, where they are using their work location, uh, whether they're on the PC or on their mobile device, because um, that will determine how we choose to get in contact with them. Yes. To be perfectly honest. Um, and so we've updated a little bit. Yes, I can show you what we did. Um, here it's also in German because those two guys are in German. So you see their German text about what they think they want to say. Mm -hmm. Launch, whatever. So they say verfügbar, which means available. Yeah. Um, everything else is sh for sure in your language, whatever you uh, have decided to configure the client. Um, but what you can see now is she is available on the mobile phone. He is available on the mobile phone. He is available on PC. And if you use our hot desking, you see the desk where he is sitting. Um, this is very important to understand now. Uh, this one uses his mobile device, so he has the mobile device in his hands and started the app. James will close the app now on this device. And if you do so, you see he's still available on the mobile device, but he has the mobile device in his pocket now or the application is closed. So that's how we do it. And if it comes uh, back online again, um, it reconnects and you can see available on mobile device and you're sure now that he has opened the application. Mm -hmm. If somebody is completely gray like this, he has no mobile device, no connection at all, and you can really not reach him. Can you believe it? You cannot call this guy. Yeah, shocking. Shocking. <laughs> shocking for a PBX vendor. <laughs> yeah, exactly. Yeah. <laughs> um, but here you can see the difference. And now you could argue um, this is not important. I only want to see if I can reach him or not. And it's completely, I'm not interested in how I can reach him. Um, this was what you argued in the past mm -hmm. or what we, we, we discussed in the team. And then we discussed a little bit more in detail and we said, this is not true. Maybe this is true for a private chat application. Mm -hmm. I just chat and then yeah. whatever happens. Um, but in a business situation, you maybe think a little bit of if you want to contact mm -hmm. somebody or not. Yes. If you need help because there is an emergency, mm -hmm. then you would consider, okay, he's available on his mobile device. I would disturb him now because it's important. Yeah. But if you just want to ask, do you want to make a coffee break? Then maybe you don't want to send this push or maybe you want, yeah. depends on you. Yeah. So the decision is made by the user. Mm -hmm. The user can understand the situation of his contact or if from the other person. And then he can decide, is it smart or not? Or do I want to disturb him in this mm -hmm. situation or not? Do I want to call him or do I want to send him a chat instead? Yes. Just the way to get in contact. Now you can. Mm -hmm. You know he's in the office working on his desk. Yeah. He's on his PC. He is currently has opened the application on his mobile. He has the mobile in his pocket. Mm -hmm. And maybe he's on vacation. You don't know. You never know. Yeah. So you know what he's doing. Mm -hmm. Even if he goes on holiday, maybe he can unpair his device, then he's gray again like the others. Yeah. So mm -hmm. exactly, you yeah. can show the other people uh, exactly uh, what your state is. Good. And it sort of goes hand in hand with the read messages from the chat mm -hmm. messages as well. Yes. Uh, it has definitely some business applications there. Um, and it's full auto. Yeah. Um, because normally you have those uh, messages which you can type on your own, mm -hmm. uh, um, how you are available or not. Yeah. But if you forget it, 
because you just leave the office and you did not type in I left the office now, <laughs> yeah. then uh, nobody knows. Yeah, of course. So, so it automatically sense. detects where you are. Yes. Good. Good. Um, now, uh, the next thing that we've worked on is obviously we've introduced a lot of new features with the pairing and so on and so on. Um, that meant we have a bit more settings. Of course, they needed to be simplified and further refined. So we have made accessing the various settings options uh, from across the client uh, much more consistent and much easier to use. Yes. This is the last thing we do for the settings. Yeah, hopefully. We had a lot of complaints <laughs> about settings in the old client, in the new client, in yeah. whatever client. So now it's like this. Press here for the settings. Here are the settings. You press here. You have some sections in the settings. If you don't like sections, you can just scroll. So I go from bottom to top and you see it's not that long. So we also reduced the yeah. amount of settings which are available. Um, but then, maybe it's handy, we had this, that we had the phone options here and your um, profile options Profile options here. Mm -hmm. You can still access it like this. If you click here, it goes to the global settings, but it jumps directly to the phone settings. Mm -hmm. Here, same goes for here. I click here, it goes to the global settings, but directly to your profile settings. Yep. Same goes for here. So maybe this is a solution where everybody's happy now, hopefully. Hopefully, yeah. We, um, we worked very hard on making sure that we got <laughs> the settings as unified and as consistent as possible. Now, the next thing we need to talk about is obviously uh, with the advent of the mobile applications and so on and so on, uh, we need to clarify the difference between the Pascom Classic solutions and cloud solutions uh, and the impact that it has on what we offer. Uh, first things first, uh, the Pascom mobile client, um, yeah, to have full functionality, including SIP uh, telephony and so on, you need to have PASCOM 17 cloud. So it has to be hosted in the cloud stack, uh, the PASCOM yeah. cloud stack. This does not um, matter if this is a partner which hosts the cloud stack, of course, or yeah. if you hosting the cloud stack, or mm -hmm. if we host the cloud yeah. stack, no problem, but it has to be the cloud solution. Mm -hmm. um, then everything works out of the box. Why or why do we do this? Um, because we have another solution, which is uh, the Pascom Classic on-site installation, mm -hmm. which we had, or still have, yeah. many of them. So most of our installations are the Pascom Classic. Um, what is the difference between the two solutions? The one is a cloud solution, which has a session border control in front and as many PBXs behind it as you like. We do the encryption, we do... Um, yeah, security, rate mm -hmm. limits, encryption, stuff like this in the session border and we ensure that you can put this directly to the internet. Yeah. If you have our Pascom Classic solution, it is also secured. Mm -hmm. It has also long usernames, long password. It has rate limits, yeah. but it's unencrypted, 50, 60, zip. Mm -hmm. Now you could argue, okay, um, many providers do that. Yeah. They put 50, 60 uh, port to the internet and it works. Yes, it works, but they do a lot to protect these ports. They mm -hmm. do a lot to yeah, maintain the system, what you cannot do on site. Yeah. So the end of the story would be, if we say you can use the classic with our new app and in addition, the soft phone functionality. Mm -hmm. I'm just talking about the soft phone yeah. functionality. Everything else will work. Our classic installations are doing a fallback mm -hmm. to GSM. Yeah. So you can get the push messages, you can have everything. But if you place a phone call, it will be always be GSM. If you receive a phone call, it always would be GSM. GSM. This is the one thing you have to mention. Now you could argue it would technically not be a problem if you would allow the app to connect to an unsecure SIP peer. Well, technically it's not te a problem. Technically it's not a problem. But as our slogan says, uh, safety first, mm -hmm. this is not consistent if no, you it's, do it like it's, it's really not. Um, we do focus strongly on security. Um, so technically, as Matthias says, it's possible, but um, it's not advisable. And we would really uh, mm -hmm. focus on the security aspect, which is why we have disabled the function. Yes. Yeah. So use the cloud stack, cloud solution, if you want to have mm -hmm. soft phone via SIP. Yeah. But if you can live with using the soft phone via GSM, Everything is also cool in the classic. To be fair, if you're an existing customer, uh, in actual fact, you're getting a slightly more upgraded app 
with the similar functionality, a bit, uh, some improvements and so on, uh, but the actual behavior in itself is the same. Um, and of course, if you're a cloud customer, you get the full functionality. Now, as an existing customer, you may be sitting there going, well, that's really unfair. Um, but it's not, because come PASCOM 18, uh, we are doing a platform unification. So our cloud infrastructure with all the session border controller and uh, encryption technology that we have in there is going to be unified with the on-premise solutions. You will have a cloud in the pocket Yes, so you'll have the infrastructure benefits of the cloud directly on your premises uh, or in your virtual machine. Yes. And without in. any restrictions and without any um, things you have to have in the cloud that it does a connect or something. No, mm -hmm. it's completely independent solution and in a small box you have everything on site exactly. or in your virtual machine yeah. and you can be your own. So, internet provider, if you like. Exactly. Apologies, you're going to have to wait a little bit uh, longer than our cloud customers. Um, however, it is the way it is, and it's, you don't have to worry, it is coming um, relatively soon, sometime next year. Okay, good. So, uh, that's it for the PASCOM 17 presentation. And uh, now it's time to go through the questions that you've all come up with. So, I'm just going to have a quick refresh here, see what we've got. Okay, um, so. Hopefully you've asked some questions throughout the show. What we have here, first question coming in, uh, file transfers, are they available in the app? Not yet. Not yet, okay. But they will be coming? Yes. Okay. Good. Yes, they will, will, will be coming. Um, for now, file transfer is possible from one desktop application to another one, mm -hmm. not, to the, um, not to the device, so, so the, the mobile device, or because you were to store it, yeah. where to, I don't know, do this and that and uh, choose a folder and in which situation. So we will do the following that we store in future the files on the server. Mm -hmm. um, this also enables us for, I take a picture and I put it in the chat. Okay. Um, so sending you a file will be a kind of chat message yeah. and then you can download it whenever you want. So we change mm -hmm. the whole file transfer system in the next versions. Okay, good. Um, so, uh, next question coming in is interoperability with wired Jabra headsets. Uh, I'm assuming by that we mean can we use the functionality like the click on the buttons and things like that. Um, like the happy plastic button. Mm -hmm. <laughs> yeah, like we did with uh, uh, the Bluetooth headset. Um, you can use a Bluetooth headset on these um, mobile devices. Mm -hmm. We support it. I start with, because it's always different from platform <laughs> to platform. <laughs> um, on uh, the iPhone, uh, with the call kit integration and everything, we just do what the iPhone can do. So okay. you can connect it to your car, you can connect it to Bluetooth, whatever, and it will react like whatever Bluetooth thing you normally connect to your phone. Okay. On Android, um, we did the Bluetooth stuff, so mm -hmm. you can add Bluetooth, we switch um, to Bluetooth. But in some circumstances, if you have, like a car says, I want to connect to a real phone, then we say, here is Bluetooth. Sometimes it works, sometimes it does not work. Um, so there are some restrictions until we use also on Android the uh, complete phone integration. Okay, fair enough. And what about on the desktop applications? Because um, I mean, I've got a Jabra Evolve 65 and I can use all the functionality of the SDK and so on uh, on the Bluetooth headset. Yes. Does that also work for the wired headsets as well? Like the Jabra 40? On the desktop. desktop mm -hmm. Yes. Okay, good. I think that was more what the question was related to. Uh, next question coming in is uh, terminal server compatibility. Yes. Yes. It's in the documentation. I wrote it last night. Uh, so the new clients will be terminal server uh, compatible. Um, and all you have to do is just go to our documentation. Yeah. And so to, to set things clear, it was always terminal server okay. compatible, but people wanted to have one installation directory. Mm -hmm. Normally we have for each user one installation directory in his home directory. So we put data in there like a browser does. Uh, and now you can say, I want one installation on the terminal server for all my users and you can update it in one place. Mm -hmm. okay. That's Good. it, so it was working before. Okay, uh, interesting question here. Can I use the mobile app with uh, older PASCOM server? No. Uh, no. <laughs> no. No. I mean, how would you pair it for one? You cannot pair it, no. but you could maybe print the barcode on your own. You could do, yeah. <laughs> maybe. Yeah. But even then, the push service is missing. Exactly. 
Mm -hmm. So it makes it's not fun. Nein. Um, we could do this with the desktop client. Mm -hmm. So the new desktop client is always also compatible to older version, down to uh, our LTS which, version, which is 7.11. 7.11, yeah. So we could make this, but now we have to change a lot of technology, and so it's not possible. You have to have 17 as server, and then all cloud stack server or classic server, and mm -hmm. then all the applications work. Okay, good. So fair enough. Uh, right. Um, can I deactivate the red uh, read ticks? No. 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 Business. You need to know. Yes. Simple. We need uh, to report your boss. Exactly. If you yeah. answer too slow. <laughs> <laughs> um, okay. As an admin, uh, how can I pair the apps? We went through that. And yes. uh, um, you can get the if you go to the device itself, select yes. it, edit it, and then. But it's important. Mm -hmm. uh, in the partner uh, presentations, because we talk all with our partners up front a little bit yeah. and tell them what's coming up, and they had a problem in understanding. Uh, or some of them, for sure not all, that they said, um, if I pair the phone with my desktop client, do I always need the desktop client? Mm -hmm. And they were afraid because they said, yeah, it's a shiny new world and I could give somebody just such a phone and he does not need a desktop client at all. Mm -hmm. Are they related? And no, it's no. just a transport for the code. Exactly. So you can also go to the POSCOM commander mm -hmm. and pair it by yourself and yeah. then hand it over to yeah. whatever so user. It's for authentication purposes. Yes. Um, so it's a good question. Yeah. And next uh, question that we have coming in, sort of related, is can I restrict uh, end user pairing? Yes. Yeah. It goes one-to-one um, -one with the uh, if I allow the follow me system or not. Mm -hmm. If somebody is allowed to configure the device, yeah. He's also allowed to pair. Mm -hmm. I can show this quick. If I go to the device, or not to the device, users. go to the users and say this user, which is, which one do I take? That one. Edit this and then I go to not his fax machine. Assign devices. You can see it's configurable by the user. Yeah. And if I disable this, then he also cannot pair like this. Now the user cannot pair at all. I can uh, save. I can apply. And if it's applied, I can go back and it works immediately. So here I go down now and I can do nothing. Mm -hmm. And you have a big fat red me warning message saying yeah. the settings are blocked by your system admin. Yeah. So if you're an end user and you're disgruntled by that, speak to your system admin. And if you're a system admin who doesn't want to have the workload, then enable it and then off you go. Yeah, yeah it depends. Yeah. If, it depends on your users. Mm -hmm. If you have very well-trained users, then yeah. it's better for you if they mm -hmm. can do it on their own. But if not, if they destroy everything, you have more work at the end of the day. So, <laughs> yeah. Um, yeah. so we made it switchable. Yeah. If you've got internal policies that say, OK, um, we provide the, the mobile devices and you have to you know, populate them with all the apps and everything beforehand, uh, then of course you can do it. But if you've got to bring your own device uh, sort of set up, then you allow your end users to do it and save yourself a little bit of hassle. Cool, good. Um, have a quick look. Um, question to availability of the apps. Apple and Android, when are they available? Android is available now. now. You go just mm -hmm. go to the store or to the Play Store and you search for Pascom. Mm -hmm. uh, don't be scared about if you search Pascom, you will find a pastoral communication, yeah. which is something religious. Skip it. Mm -hmm. <laughs> Go to the Pascom client. We had the same problem with Moby Dick with the book. Yeah. Now we have other problems. But <laughs> <laughs> search Pascom, search for the logo, which you can now see. Yeah, that, that's right. Here, yeah, that's, that's the logo you will done. find. Yeah. And Just in that corner over there. <laughs> yes. And, um, for our Apple users, we are still reviewing, as you know. Mm -hmm. Apple has a very strict yeah, very review stringent. process, mm -hmm. and they don't like our barcode scanner for now. So okay. we are talking about what we have to uh, write down that everybody understands mm -hmm. uh, the barcode scanner, uh, because uh, you're not allowed to scan a barcode, and you could enable features of your applications by scanning a barcode, okay. and you could sell the barcodes somewhere else, not yeah. through the Apple Store. Okay. So that's the discussion. Mm -hmm. And uh, if they understand that we just scan username and password and yep. no commercial codes for something, then it will work very soon. But we don't know when. If you want to join us now, 
you can, can just send an email to info at passcom.net mm -hmm. with the email address which is related to your Apple account. Then we can invite you to test flight. Test flight is a pre-test environment of Apple. Mm -hmm. And then you can access it now. Okay. Good. Fair enough. Um, so just quickly have another quick look. Uh, client auto update with older servers. No. No. What does this mean? We are updating um, our clients automatically, full mm -hmm. auto. We did this since the beginning yeah. because we said if mm -hmm. you fire and forget, of you course. distribute them and then they will update on yeah. their own. Um, so the new client can only be updated by the new server. Yeah, exactly. So if you have an old server um, installation mm -hmm. and it has no idea about the new client, you could connect because the API were compatible. Yeah. But um, it cannot update. Yeah. It doesn't have the new features and all yes. that stuff in the server. So yeah. it does not know about how to update the new app. Yeah. But that's it. Yeah. Other than that, it's compatible. You mm -hmm. can use it. Um, it's just the auto updates don't work. Yes. So you'd still have to go to the current solution and get the new apps from there. Okay, good. Uh, have one. Any any new? I just have a quick time for us. one. Maybe uh, we close down then. Just a last refresh. If there's any coming in. Um, got one here. Are you on project for the new interface? Um, uh, note that's a development project, so if you've got any suggestions, uh, put it into our forum, please. Um, that's about it on that front. Just one last refresh. No, that's it. So that's uh, time uh, for the PASCOM 17 release keynote. Uh, thank you very much for joining us and for taking the time out to watch us. Um, so until next time, uh, we'll see you then, and have a very Merry Christmas and a Happy New Year. See you. Cheers. Bye. Bye.